right, welcome to another super fast example of how to program in Scratch. Uh, you can do a lot of super cool things with Scratch, uh, including making your own apps and some things that will be covered in other videos. Uh, this video is being designed for my Redlands Conservatory class, but anyone is welcome to check it out. So if we're going to deal with gravity, let's go ahead and start off by getting rid of our cat and selecting a different sprite right over here that uh, might be affected by gravity. How about a basketball? That sounds perfect. We'll put our basketball up there. I'm going to set it over to the side of the screen for now. And because our gravity is going to be true gravity, um, and it's going to accelerate this ball, it's not just going to move it in a direction, let's give gravity a little bit of a challenge here and select something in our menu that would check if our gravity was really behaving like gravity. Hey, how about a trampoline? That sounds perfect. Okay, so I'll set our trampoline on the virtual ground here. And let's select that first sprite, the basketball again, and we will start our script. So anyone that's done a little scratch programming knows uh, that you will start off most scripts with the when green flag is clicked, meaning that when our green flag over here is clicked, the execution of the script will start. Uh, I'm just repeating that for people that might just be starting out. And so that we have our board all set up and our sprites in the right location, let's go ahead and define where these are going to start. So you can just set an X and Y coordinate for your sprites to start off. But since we're dealing with the basketball, I think it's cool when you use the glide too. So it'll glide into position. And let's select a position uh, that's somewhere near the top of the screen and somewhere near the center of the screen. So how about minus four? That'll be near the center of the screen. And 199 should put our basketball near the top of the screen. Now if we were to execute this short script, we'll hit the green flag. That simply starts us off with our basketball in the right location. So because we're going to be dealing with gravity and writing a little bit of a physics engine, we're going to need at least a couple of variables. Uh, variables are nothing more than a name that you put on a value. So you, your value can change uh, and it'll always have the same name when you want to refer to it. You know, just like algebra, if you were to say a plus 2 equals 4, then you would know that the other a equaled 2. And you can change the value of that a to whatever you would like it to be. So let's make a variable. And how about we'll call our, our first variable gravity. Sounds good to me. And once we have gravity, we want to set the value of gravity as to what value we would like it to start with. So how about set gravity to zero? We'll start off with no gravity. As I said, we're going to do real gravity and we're going to define it in terms of acceleration. So that number, that zero, is going to change as our basketball speeds towards our trampoline when we drop it. So the next thing we're going to want to do is we will need a second variable because we have the trampoline. We want to have a variable for rebound because that will determine how bouncy the surface is that the ball is hitting. So it's kind of cool. It gives us a lot of extra things to do. So let's make another variable and how about we just call this second variable rebound. That should work. Okay. And just like gravity, we are going to go ahead and set rebound to, it, this can be any arbitrary number because this is going to be a number that determines how hard our uh, ball there will bounce off the trampoline. I wanted to say our ball sprite, but for some reason that was hard to say. So uh, rebound is now set to 5 and we will be able to adjust these values to change gravity or to change how much rebound there is and play with this within the program. So let's go and we'll find out how well it works once we actually see it work. Let's go ahead and each program, almost any program you write in any language, is going to have what they call a main loop. A loop is just something that the program will do over and over again. Uh, you can have loops that are forever like this one or you can have them where there's a condition where it'll do the loop until a certain uh, event happens. So in this case, what we're going to do is each time it goes through the loop, we want gravity to get a little stronger and a little stronger so that that ball will move faster and faster. So let's go back to variables and we will go ahead and set our gravity within the loop uh, to a changing number. So come to your operators, select minus. We're going to put that in place of the zero there and go back to variables, grab gravity again. And here we have the option of setting how strong the acceleration of gravity is. So set gravity to gravity minus, and we could say, you know, this can be any number. The bigger number it is, uh, you know, the stronger the pull of gravity. But let's start off easy because we want to have a, we want to see an elegant example in our first program here. So each time we go through the loop now, gravity is going to get a bit stronger. And we need to have a reaction from that gravity. So let's zoom over to motion so that we'll be able to see that reaction. And let's look for change y by, we'll put that in. So y is your up and down coordinate. 
and we're now going to change y by gravity. So let's go to our variables, we'll grab gravity again, and then let's just very quickly review. We have set gravity to zero, rebound to five, and then it's going to start doing this loop where gravity keeps, uh, we keep subtracting 0.2 from gravity, and then we change our y coordinate by whatever gravity is. So each time through the loop, this is going to go 0.2, 0.4, 0.8, or 0 0.6, 0 0.8, by it's going to do steps of 0.2. So let's see, if we ran this, I think that we should actually see an example of gravity right off the bat. We'll see if we're doing okay. So we'll hit the green flag and there we go. That ball dropped and when it dropped, as you saw, it went faster and faster. So that's pretty good, but it went right through our trampoline. So we probably want to make a change there. So let's stop the script. And at this point, um, if we're going to make a change, we want to have it be under a, a certain condition. So the way we get our conditions is we will go over to if so that we can say if something happens, we want there to be a change. Um, and what we want it to do is when it's touching the trampoline, we want that change to occur. So let's go over to our sensing, and we will look at um, if touching. We'll drag that over and put that in our if statement. So now if it's touching, and we will select um, Sprite 2, because Sprite 2 is our trampoline. So if it's touching Sprite 2, we're going to change gravity. That's kind of fun to be able to do that, isn't it? So let's go back to our variables where gravity is, and we will select set gravity. We're going to move that over. Aha! To rebound. Because that is, we want to be able to define what the change is going to be related to rebound. Now, rebound itself, we don't want it to rebound the same height every time, so we need rebound to change just like gravity changed. So let's go ahead and we'll grab another set, and we will say set rebound each time it goes through this, each, this if statement, set rebound to, let's see, oh, you know what we should do? We're going to use an operator again. So let's zip over here to the operator because we want, re, as I said, we want rebound to change. So set rebound to, how about rebound, and we'll have to think of how strong of a rebound we want, to rebound minus, and why don't we make our rebound, we don't want to watch this ball rebound all day, so we'll make it a little stronger than gravity, we'll say 0.05. So now our rebound is going to be 0.05. Now we don't want it to continue to rebound forever, so let's do one more if statement, and I believe we're going to have a wrap there. So let's go over to if. And we'll put that again in our main loop and, uh, and underneath the first if statement. And if rebound equals zero, if we hit zero, we know that our ball has rebounded uh, and, and it has gotten all the way down to the lowest uh, level that it can, we'll just have the script stop. So it'll only rebound a set number of times based on this. So let's again go to our operators. And we can use our Boolean logic here. And how about we bring this over? And we will say, if rebound is less than, what should it be? Zero. Yeah, if it's less than zero, then it shouldn't be rebounding anymore, right? Then we want the script to stop. So let's head on over to our controls, and we will do stop script. So this is where our program will end. So our ball should start here and glide into position. It should then fall, and when it contacts the second sprite, it should rebound. It should zoom back up here uh, by the rebound amount that we set. And then it should again fall as gravity grabs it again and continue to do so until uh, we reach zero <laughs> and, and each of these things has been exhausted. So let's try it. Let's try it. That's our best bet. So we'll click it. Up goes our ball. It falls. It accelerates. Oh, it hits it. It bounces once, twice, three times. <laughs> Is it going to bounce forever or did we, did we get our zero in there right? Uh, it's going down very slowly. That's a heck of a lot of rebounds. You can see the rebound is, is slowly decreasing. Um, so our ball would eventually stop bouncing, but it's going to take a while. So let's increase the, uh, the gravity there in the rebound. And instead of 0.05, which is what I put in, let's just try 0.5. And let's try it again. And that would be, it's going to have a little bit more of a pull on the ball. There we go. Only one, two, 
three, and you can adjust all of your gravity settings. There we go, just like a real ball would do. You can adjust all of your gravity settings so that you can have really fine control of how your sprite acts, bounces off of things, and how gravity affects it. Now, just a quick example here of how far you can take this. I wrote a little lunar lander program, which those of you that are younger than probably 35 years of age won't remember, but a version of this used to be in the arcades a long time ago. It was a lot of fun, and I called it Lunar Test. And just to give you a quick example, here we go. I have gravity, and I built a little sprite that looked like a space capsule. And as we uh, work the thrusters, we can control everything from fuel to lander velocity. All right, and successfully land. <laughs> so that completes our lesson here on gravity. And I hope you enjoyed that sprite lesson. Uh, I'm going to have a web page up that goes through all the lessons and also tells you how to write the same thing in C so that you can transition, if you'd care to, uh, to a full and robust language, even though you know what? I love Scratch. So thanks for watching.